Hi, everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, section 7.7, .7, and we're sort of continuing on with what we've been doing of seeing how you do Laplace transform on different types of functions. So in the last section, we were talking about transforms of uh, piecewise defined functions and discontinuous functions. And in this section, we've got two different types of functions, periodic and power functions. And for this video, uh, I'll just talk about periodic functions. So a periodic function is a function that just repeats over and over again, just like a sine function. Um, but it could be, a sine function is a common example of a periodic function, but it could be sort of anything that sort of does, uh, repeats over and over again. So we could do something like this or whatever. I'm not gonna draw a whole bunch of examples. So how do we define this rigorously? The, key thing of a periodic function is that it's completely defined by what is happening in a particular period. So in this case, we might look at just this part right here and say, okay, well, this is what's happening with the function, and then we know that it's going to repeat over and over again. And so the way that we define a periodic function, uh, a function f of t is said to be periodic with period capital T if f of little t plus big T equals f of t for all t in the domain of f. Okay, so in our example, we might have, uh, if this goes from some a to b, then t would equal, big T would be b minus a. And for any t, oops, there we go. So if you have some little t there, and then you look at the same spot hopped over big T, so then you get t plus t, you get the same value of the function up here. And so that's how you define um, if that's true, then you have a periodic function, and that could happen for any, any t value along here. So now we want to think about how we would take the Laplace transform of a periodic function. And so something interesting is that we have, with the periodic function, we have sort of the stuff that's happening, say in the red box here, and then we have a bunch of translations of that. And we know a lot of stuff about, we have properties about how you can do the Laplace transforms of translations of functions. So let's think about now just the transform, um, the Laplace transform of just the stuff in the red box. And fortunately from the last section, we have this new windowing function that can help us sort of visualize um, just the stuff in the red box. So let's move on. Well, let's move on to the next page. So now I'm going to draw my periodic function again, and it maybe won't look exactly the same, but that's okay. And before I had my red box sort of in the middle, but really it's going to be a little bit simpler to think about my period going from zero until say t over here, instead of from some a to b that were a distance t apart. And now I can draw my red box right here starting at zero. And this is fine because it's a periodic function and like any red box I draw that's capital T wide is gonna represent the function. Um, even if like sort of the order of points is shifted around. And so now what I'm going to define is f of f sub capital T 
of t. And I'm going to define this as my regular function, my periodic function, times the window function from 0 to capital T. And remember, there we can write this in terms of unit step functions. So this is going to be f of t times the quantity, our regular unit step function minus the unit step function shifted by capital T. And then I could also write this as a piecewise defined function, where it's regular f between 0 and capital T, and 0 otherwise. So now, basically, the function I have just drawn is the same thing here, but then 0 everywhere else. So this green one is f sub t of t. Now I do this because the if we think about the Laplace transform of this, it's actually much simpler than the Laplace transform of the whole function because it's 0 almost everywhere. Um, so our Laplace transform of f sub t is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f sub t times e to the negative st dt. But that's just going to have non-zero values between 0 and t. And those non, so we've got the e to the negative st, and then the value of ft between 0 and big T is just regular f. So now we see how we relate the Laplace transform of f sub t to sort of part of the Laplace transform of regular f. So now to get the Laplace transform of uh, the whole function, we basically just have to take f sub t and shift it around a bunch. And we know how to um, deal with Laplace transform of shifts. So let's think about now um, f sub t of t equals um, f of t times ut minus f of t times u t minus big T. Now in the last section we had this nice result about the Laplace transform of section of functions multiplied by the unit step function. And so I will write that over here from last section. We had the Laplace transform of f of t times u of t minus a. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change that to g. s equals e to the negative a s times the Laplace transform of the sh translated g. Okay, so I'm going to sort of keep this result here. So now I can go ahead and take the Laplace transform of f sub big T again. And I can use this green result and the linearity of the Laplace transform. So I got, uh, I need to take the Laplace transform of regular f of t times u of t minus the Laplace transform of f of t times u of t minus big T. Now for our for the first term, we can use a equals 0. And so then e to the 0s is just 1. And we get that the Laplace transform of f times u without any translations is going to be equal to the Laplace transform of f of t. Now, why does that make sense? Because um, if you multiply f times u, the regular 
unit step function, um, that kills off everything before t equals zero and leaves everything the same for t greater than zero. But we only care, the Laplace transform only cares about t greater than zero anyway. So that's exactly the same. And now for the next one, now here is where we really have to apply the theorem. And uh, we can apply that directly with A equals capital T. And so then we get E to the negative capital T S, the Laplace transform of F of T plus capital T. Okay, well, what is F of T plus capital T? Well, it just equals the Laplace transform of regular F because F is periodic, because F is periodic. Okay, so now let's use, let's simplify our notation a little bit. And so let's let the Laplace transform of F equal big F of S and the Laplace transform of F sub capital T equal big F sub capital T. And now we can uh, rewrite our relationships here. And we know that from what we have up here, this is going to give us big F sub T of S equals big F minus E to the negative T S times big F of S. And now I can shuffle things around, and this gives me, let's see, we can rewrite this right here. I can pull out the big F times 1 minus e to the negative ts, and if I divide, I get big F of s equals F sub t divided by 1 minus e to the negative ts okay and so this is a really nice theorem that gives us a relationship between the laplace transform of our periodic function and the laplace transform of the windowed function f sub t and so that's, that's sort of the important theorem uh, to know about periodic functions, and you can use this to uh, calculate the Laplace transform uh, of a periodic function.